Now that you've practiced mixing some paint, we're going to talk a little bit about painting technique. That would be how you apply the paint onto the paper or canvas. There's a lot of different painting techniques, and there's also tools that you can use to help to create these techniques. We have our brushes, which we've already talked about, different sizes and shapes, flat and round. We have other tools like these. These are rubber tipped. They look like brushes, but they're used to move the paint around the paper or scrape through it. We have other scraping tools like these two here. These will scrape through. This one is a metal rib that we often use for ceramics, but it's serrated on the edge. And this is um, just a larger um, serrated edge. This one is made out of rubber, but they both will scrape through paint. These look like brushes as well. You can hold them in your hand like a pencil and, and scratch through the paint. They have different tips on the ends. Simple things like a fork or a knife will work. And then we have our palette knives. Palette knives come in different sizes and shapes. The kind that we have, we have a, a flat one and a bent one like this. The palette knives work very well for mixing your paints. So the first thing you want to do is figure out how to get a nice smooth layer of paint onto your page. So choose the brush you want to work with. I'm going to choose this one. It's pretty soft on the end. It's got a flat tip. Once you've got your paint on your palette, you're going to go ahead and mix the color that you want to work with. I'm going to mix the color with the palette knife. So I'm going to take, um, we'll mix some red and blue together. I'm going to take the red first because the red is the lighter color and just a little bit of blue. And I'm going to use the palette knife to blend the paint. The advantage of the palette knife is you can scrape it across the page and really press the paint together and not have it spread out too thin. You can also turn it over because it's pretty flexible. Help to mix it together. Now you can also mix your paint with a brush. So I'll show you that. If you just want to use your brush to mix this paint, I'm going to just add a little bit more blue to show you. It would just look like this. And just be aware when you're mixing paint with a brush that it doesn't spread out into a huge circle because then your paint kind of dries out it's a little harder to handle that way. So sort of push it into the center as you're mixing. Just like with the Play-Doh, make sure you're mixing this paint thoroughly. There aren't streaks of different colors in it. And in the end, you're looking at one solid color to work with. So that's what that would look like. Now, if you're gonna paint on the page a nice smooth area, you go ahead and use your brush. Pay attention to your, the, the position of your brush and the direction of your brush strokes. You can get a nice smooth layer of the paint. You can always add another layer if you want to. Now another thing you can do with your brush, simple brush, um, is to change the brush stroke. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'm going to start out kind of smooth like this, but then if I go in there and I change the brush stroke, I'm sort of twirling it. Okay, it gives it a different look. Here's that same technique done with a lighter color. It's a little easier to see, but you can see the swirl that you get from a smooth brush application, but twisted, and then this flat color. Now, another, thi another thing you can do is just kind of play around with the texture of it, and that's what this one is. So if you were to do that, you would take your paint, you can put it on there, and play around with how you're applying it. Now the soft brush is going to be harder to do that with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of this this larger stiffer brush and I'll play around with it applying the paint in different directions. And here's what it might look like once it's dry. That's a, a lighter color what that might look like. So that's a simple way to apply your paint thinking about your brush strokes. But there are different techniques that we use and we want to pay attention to those techniques. So the first one we want to talk about uh, is called glazing. So glazing is when you lay a smooth layer just like this, you let it dry and then you put another smooth layer on top of it. So we'll go ahead and do that on this page since this one is already dry. 
So we have a nice smooth layer here. And if I decide I want to do a glaze of blue on top of this, I would go ahead and get my blue, get it from my palette over there, and do a, just a nice smooth layer on top, but it's thin, I'm making it a thin layer. And you can see through the blue, the green is showing right through there. It's pretty subtle, but that's called glazing. Here's a dry example of glazing. Here's another dry example of glazing. Okay, your second one that we want to look at is dry brush. So dry brush is when you use a brush that's dry. Usually you use one that's kind of old and crusty, it works pretty well. And you paint on the paint with no water. So I'm going to take a little bit of blue here and I'll show you what this looks like. I'm just getting a little bit on the tip of the brush like that. And then when I go to paint, I'll do it right here, up here, very lightly. You can see that the texture that it makes. The less paint you have on your brush, the, the um, drier it will look. You can go in different directions with it. Okay, so here's an example of a dry brush piece. And here's an example of a combination of glazing and dry brush. You can see the glazing was done first underneath then some dry brush, and then there's a little yellow glazing right on top of the dry brush over here. All right, the next one we want to look at is Sgraffito. Sgraffito is pretty fun. It's scratching through the paint. So you need to get a pretty good layer to start with. So I'm going to go ahead and take some blue here and paint it on. And then Sgraffito any tool will work, but you just scratch through. You can cross hatch if you want. These tools work very well for Sgraffito, so let's try a little bit of that. You can scratch through with these. You can scratch through with, with something like this. So Sgraffito is scratching through. Now sometimes you can do things that are kind of fun. Like this one here, the red paint stains the surface of the paper. So if I wanted to, I could paint on a red layer first. Then I could put some blue on top. And then when I use these to scratch through, maybe we'll use uh, this one. You can see how the red stains the paper and then the blue stains there. So um, when you scratch through, you're seeing the first color that you put down onto the paper. Sgraffito is a lot of fun to play around with. So here's a finished piece, example of Sgraffito. And here's another one. Okay, so after Sgraffito, we're going to talk about hatching or cross-hatching. And hatching or cross-hatching is just putting lines in one direction or the other or crossing them over. So you can do hatching or cross-hatching in a lot of different ways. I'm going to use a little tiny brush here and get some paint on there. And I will show you some hatching or cross-hatching very simply like this. Okay, you can do it with dry brush, one direction, then another direction. You can create hatching or cross hatching with Sgraffito. So in this sample right here, I did just that. The next technique we'll talk about is broken color. Sometimes a painter doesn't want perfect coverage or smoothly blended colors and transitions. So they'll use layers of color and build up the layers to reveal some colors underneath. It's called broken color, and the end result is having different colors work together to look like a new color without blending it on the palette. 
So for example, I'm going to start by putting a color down, a base color here, some yellow. And if I wanted to give people the feeling of orange without mixing the orange on my palette, I'm going to go, I'm going to go ahead and work with some red on top of the yellow. So, and you can do it in a lot of different ways, but I'm going to go ahead and put in sort of a pattern here of little brush strokes. When we look at that, we see the yellow and we see the red, but we're also starting to think about orange. Now you can blend and, and mix with those. You can do a little scraffito in there with it, whatever you want to do. But the broken color is when you have sort of chunks and pieces of different colors to, working together. So here's an example right here of a piece done with broken color. And you can see there's sort of chunks of white here, there's pieces of green, the darker green, pieces of this medium green and this lighter green here. And they all work together to give you the idea of the pair and of a blended color, although it's not blended on the palette, it's blended visually on the canvas. The next one is impasto. Impasto means any, any paint that you're applying very thickly. The word is Italian, but the artist most commonly associated with that technique is Dutch, Vincent van Gogh. Sometimes the paint on van Gogh's paintings is so thick that it casts a shadow. So let's do a little, a little impasto here. When you paint it, your paint is going to literally stand up off the page. You can blend colors just like you would with any other technique, but in the end, the paint is standing up off the page. It's really thickly applied. Sometimes it's fun to use Scraffito or you know these tools here to help with your impasto. So it gets kind of chunky here, and that's okay. So that's one way to make that impasto work. Move it to a different spot so you can see. Some people like to use a palette knife to create their impasto. Blending different colors, different ways. But in the end, you're going to see raised paint off of the surface. Now this is a dry piece from earlier. And if you look right here, this would be considered impasto. It is raised and it almost casts a shadow. 